16 WAPT News begins with breaking news. Hello everyone, I'm Aaron Pickens. University of Mississippi Medical Center leaders are holding a news conference right now about the new COVID-19 screening and testing innovations. We go there live. Uh, so that those on the call uh, can hear it. Um, so Dr. Luann Woodward is gonna kick us off. Well, good afternoon and thank you again for being here with us today. We are. Glad to have you here. My name is Lou Ann Woodward. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Health Affairs here at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. We spoke earlier this week and since then, as we anticipated, the number of cases confirmed in Mississippi has increased and the number of patients that are under testing and waiting to have those results um, brought back to us, that number has increased as well. As we anticipated, the situation has worsened. First of all, I want to encourage everyone to remember the importance of the social distancing, the hand hygiene, staying away from people that are sick, all of the things that you've been hearing. And in fact, if you look behind me, this team, we are spread out more than we usually are. And we have some key members of our leadership team actually over here joining us on the side, Kevin Cook, Richard Summers, Dr. Chancellor Boyce, um, Chancellor Dr. Boyce, I should say. We are glad to have them with us today, um, and they are available for questions if needed. I mentioned earlier this week that as the week has gone on, we have been very busy. We have restricted our visitor policy. We have canceled elective surgeries, elective procedures, and clinic appointments in an effort to decrease the spread of COVID-19. Also this week, at the same time we have been doing these internal activities, there have been a number of things under development that will be more external activities. I promised to you and to a number of others that we would bring to bear the full resources that we have as an academic medical center. I mentioned that we have a test that is under development. Our research team is working as hard as they can to develop an in-house test for us. So that will give us increased capability and increased capacity as a state to do some additional testing. So that is underway and moving along. We are very um, thankful for that and grateful to our research teams. Also, we have been working with other state leaders, with Dr. Thomas Dobbs and his team at the State Department of Health, with MEMA, with the Department of Agriculture, with the governor and his staff, the lieutenant governor, and other members of the legislature, as well as people in the private sector, um, specifically C Spire. We have been working with them to amplify resources and to be able to provide additional services to the state of Mississippi. And what we're gonna to talk to you about today is the um, plans to implement early next week an additional capability to do screening at a statewide level and to do some additional testing. You'll hear about the details of this. This will be off-site testing at the fairgrounds. You'll hear about the details of this, but one thing I want to emphasize, and I think all of our speakers in turn will emphasize that this is not wide open testing. Um, anybody just decides they want to do a drive through as if you drive through a restaurant. There will be a screening and evaluation process first open to anybody in Mississippi. And then after that screening process has happened, if the indication is such, then that individual will, will be referred for a test. So at that point, let me turn it over to Dr. Jonathan Wilson for more information. Thank you, Dr. Woodward. So my name is Jonathan Wilson. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer here at the Medical Center. As Dr. Woodward mentioned, we're working very closely with MEMA and our partners at the State Department of Health. Um, and it's through that collaboration at the state level uh, that we're going to be able to expand our offerings of how we can screen and test for COVID-19. It's gonna be a two-pronged approach. Uh, the medical center is leading and coordinating, but we are not the only players in this, in this production. So we'll also be partnering with some of the local health systems uh, to support us, Baptist and both St. Dominic's 
have uh, agreed to support us. We don't really know what that's going to look like just yet, but uh, we know that they are in line and ready to help. Um, but the two-pronged approach is going to be one, first, telehealth and leveraging our Center for Telehealth. And the second is the field collection point, leveraging our Center for Emergency Services and some of our disaster response capability. Before I get into the field collection piece, because the two are interwoven, I want to ask Dr. Jones to come up and give us an update on the telehealth screening component, because that's the first piece that has to happen before we start talking about the field collection. Dr. Jones. My name is Alan Jones. I'm the <clears throat> chairman of the Department of Emergency Medicine, and I think we can all agree that uh, this is an unprecedented environment that we're in. We've never experienced in our lifetime. And UMC and its partners that have been introduced or that you'll uh, hear from today are poised to uh, provide an unprecedented response for the state. Um, so, so starting Monday at 8 a.m., uh, any citizen in and of the state of Mississippi will be able to access a COVID-19 triage system through the C Spire Health app for those with a smartphone and through a traditional telephone number for those with, without a smartphone uh, or a landline. Um, the service uh, will be provided again to any citizen in the state and it will, there will be no charge for it. Um, it is a triage system specifically for uh, an individual that is concerned they may have uh, symptoms consistent with COVID-19. Uh, the way the system will work is uh, on the app, after a brief registration process, the, uh, I'll call them a patient, the patient will enter into a virtual waiting room and will be picked up by a UMMC clinician. Uh, the UMMC uh, clinician will go through a screening process and if the uh, patient qualifies for testing for COVID-19 according to criteria that we are coordinating with the Mississippi Department of Health, then they will be scheduled to a time the next day at the fairgrounds where they can have that test performed. Uh, if they do not qualify by, for testing at that time, they will be provided some COVID specific information uh, and they will be uh, encouraged to call back if their symptoms change uh, after that event. We will only be scheduling for testing one day in advance. Once the testing slots for the next day fill up, uh, at that point, if you call or you get on the app, you will get a message that the testing for the next day has, has the schedule's been filled and that you would be encouraged to call back the following day. The service will be available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, for anyone in the state of Mississippi to use. And I believe after this, there will be a press release that will be issued that will uh, give more detailed information about the phone number and various things that, uh, that, that citizens will need to know. Uh, one thing that we do wanna uh, make sure we emphasize is that uh, this is a, a new process. I think everybody can kind of agree on unprecedented process where we're, we're uh, combining telehealth triage with on-site testing. And uh, as many have experienced today in the United States, there are problems with internet connectivity due to the volume of telehealth activity we believe that's going on right now. So while there may be some challenges, technological challenges, uh, there may be some uh, provider challenges. We ask that you be patient with us and we will work through those and we will provide this service to you. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Dr. Wilson to, to tell you about testing. Thank you, Dr. Jones. So I, I think it's important for us to note that at the fairgrounds where we have the uh, by appointment only uh, sample collection site, it's not open to the general public. We will paralyze our process if it were to be open to the general public. 
we would also, frankly, be wasting precious testing supplies on individuals that may not need it. So it's critical that we go through the screening process to identify the high-risk patients that need to be tested. So that's part of the reason that we're putting this in place is because we do have a national issue with testing supplies, swabs, media, things that you need to actually collect a specimen to get the test run at the state health lab from, from the Department of Health. Um, so that's one caveat uh, to the process. Um, the current plan for the site collection is Commissioner Gibson has graciously allowed us to uh, set up camp, so to speak, at the fairgrounds. Uh, we are deploying one of our mobile field hospitals that we would traditionally use to support a health system during a, uh, some type of natural disaster. And we're modifying that uh, for a drive-through appointment collection process. So you may have seen these around the country. Um, the idea is that as telehealth screens a high-risk patient, we get an appointment, we will have a line uh, of folks in their vehicles and we will do uh, screenings through those vehicles and then they will drive through our tents where our personnel will then collect a sample for testing. Um, we'll also have uh, clinical advice, uh, discharge information, self-care um, components for our process as they exit. Um, but all of this will be self-contained within the fairgrounds. Um, we also need to give a tip of the hat to some of our partners at the Department of Public Safety and Mississippi Department of Transportation and Capitol Police for helping us get all this organized with the uh, Department of Agriculture so that we can have a very streamlined process. Um, this mobile field hospital comes from a partnership between the University of Mississippi Medical Center and the State Department of Health following Hurricane Katrina. Uh, we've used the same process uh, in 2011 uh, for the flooding of when we deployed to Yazoo City, and we also used a similar process in 2014 when we responded to Winston Medical Center in Louisville when they had the tornado impact. So we're leveraging our experiences and our partnerships to try to put together something that honestly we haven't ever done before. And so it's important to know that there's not a clear playbook for this. Uh, we will have to change and adapt as we go because we're facing something there that it's impossible for us to test. However, you will see some activity over the weekend and on Monday, we will be running simulations of how to run this process as smoothly as we can. Um, so if you see or hear reports of activity at the fairgrounds, know that that's us testing our processes and not actually going live at that time. Um, so we'll begin sample collection on Tuesday morning, March 24th. Hours of operation will be 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., again, by appointment only. Uh, the timing of the day gives us time for our staff to get into our protective uh, equipment that everybody has to wear for these uh, sample collections and time to get out of them safely as well. The concept at this time is to run seven days a week um, and we will continue operations as long as we have uh, two things. One, sample and testing supplies in order to do the actual collection and good weather. We're not going to operate this in thunderstorms and downpours when it's not safe for anybody to be out and about, much less in a tent. So those two things are kind of the variables that we'll have as we move forward, but it is planned to be seven days a week, nine to five by appointment after screening through the Center for Telehealth. So with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Dobbs. Thank, thank you guys, and, and thanks, Dr. Woodford, for having me join you. I'm, on, I'm Thomas Dobbs, I'm the State Health Officer for the Department of Health. We are so excited to have the full force of the capabilities of UMMC in the fight against COVID, using their advanced capabilities in telehealth and also the infrastructure, but also the lab and, and other academic resources that they have at this, their disposal will be to the great benefit of the people of Mississippi. We're very proud to be um, partnering with you guys. I think this could be a model not only for uh, the state integrating telehealth, proper screening, and then the whole throughput process, but also for the country. I have every, every expectation that this is going to be a, a great success, although of course there's always hiccups as you go through any sort of process. Uh, if we look at what's going on in the state of Mississippi, we reported out 80 cases of COVID in the state. This number is growing very rapidly. We had one death recorded yesterday. We're going to see more and more cases. We're going to see a lot more cases. We're going to see more deaths, unfortunately. 
We're at the front end of this thing, so it's important for all, all of us to be very vigilant, respect what's going on, but also, do, also too, to take those, those measures we know that are gonna be beneficial. The social distancing, the non-pharmaceutical interventions, all these things we're doing, trying to limit people being close to one another, such that we cut off the transmission is gonna be so important right now. We all recognize how painful it is. We know people are, are suffering. Uh, I know that your political leadership is, is very much taking this into account. So it's gonna be a hard, hard few weeks for sure, but just know that there's considerations to all of these different things. But the main thing right now is to cut this epidemic off, to address this pandemic head on, and I would like to applaud UMC for taking a leadership role in this endeavor. Um, there will be other clinics like this, and there are some that are operating in different parts of the state. Um, please know that we'll try to get inventory for these things so that people can know where they can get tested at some point in the process. The Department of Health will also partner with National Guard and geographic areas where there is enhanced need. But, but once again, I think this specific model is absolutely fantastic. We're super excited to see it get into operation. The only last thing I'll say is how important it is to know that asymptomatic people do not need to be tested. Only symptomatic people need to be tested. People who have fever, documented fever, are need to be tested if they have respiratory symptoms. The travel is no longer important because we have transmission within our communities. We know there's a lot of fear out there. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the supplies that we've used up so far that have used up some of our capabilities at the, at the public health level and then also in the supplies have been worried well. People who had no illness whatsoever. These are, these are growing resources, but they're not inexhaustible. It's very important for us to target these resources to the people who need it most, and that's gonna be testing people who are symptomatic to make sure we can diagnose COVID. There's no real benefit in testing some asymptomatic people at this time. If you don't have symptoms and you test negative today, it doesn't mean you're not gonna test positive tomorrow. It can be a false sense of security. And anyway, one last thank you and look forward to, to working with you guys. I'm Hugh Mina with C Spire. C Spire Cares, we are, know how important it is to limit exposure to COVID-19 and how critical that is. Our telehealth app does just that. Scheduling COVID-19 tests is logistically challenging. This app provides the solution to scheduling tests with UMMC. Because we're in a time of economic uncertainty, we're offering the app and patient consults for free to all Mississippians. On Monday, you'll be able to download the app by going to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store for Android. Some of our customers already have this app and even and, and customer, and those who are not customers of Ceasefire have this app and are able to use it in our partnership that we formed with UMMC several months ago. This app has been tested over the last four or five months in, in a commercial environment. Uh, we, it will be modified over the weekend for this specific purpose that's been described here. And we will uh, uh, be, it'll be available for download in that form on Monday. If you have it in the existing form, it will automatically switch over to the COVID-19 version of the C Spire Health app. UMC, UMMC has some of the best healthcare professionals in the country. C Spire is pleased to work closely with them to serve the people of this great state. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. I'm Andy Gibson. I'm Mississippi's Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce, and also in that capacity serve as Chairman of the Mississippi Fair Commission. And let me say, we've been doing all that we can to help fight the results of COVID-19 in the Agriculture Department. And this opportunity, when I became aware of it last week, I, I just want to thank the University of Mississippi Medical Center, Dr. Woodward, Dr. Wilson, the whole team here. We are blessed to have uh, Dr. Dobbs, everyone pulling the same direction, partnerships. That's what this is about. So when I was approached earlier this week about the opportunity to, to host a remote testing uh, center on the state fairgrounds, I immediately said yes, didn't have to think about it at all. For one thing, uh, as you know, the large meetings are not happening right now. And every event that had been scheduled on the Mississippi fairgrounds for the next two months has been canceled by the promoters. So uh, it's really a, a good opportunity, a good time for us to have this resource. The, the fairgrounds is the ideal location to have 
the drive-through testing center, and we're very, very honored and happy to be a part of finding a solution, not fighting just the results of COVID-19, but fighting this terrible disease itself. And I just want to thank you, UMMC, for taking the initiative. Thank you for allowing us to be part of this. Uh, I've seen the design. It's an excellent design, one way in, one way out. Great uh, opportunity. And to the people of Mississippi, just know, we, uh, we have faced trying times before. And we've gotten through them, through Katrina and other emergencies, and we're going to face this one the same way. We're going to do everything we can to fight it, and we're going to win. We're going to come out. It may be difficult. There will be some dark days ahead, but we will defeat this uh, disease, and we will come out on the other side. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the great state of Mississippi. All right, thank you. Um, uh, before we open up to questions, just a, a one, one housekeeping piece of note, uh, Mr. Mina. So my, our understanding is right now, the app, C Spire Health app, uh, has to do an update for it to turn over to the COVID-19 triage system. If you do not have automatic updates on your apps, it will not automatically turn over. You will have to actively update it. So if you already have the C Spire Health app, or if you happen to download it before it flips over to the underlying title is UMMC Virtual COVID-19 Triage, then on Monday, you might want to start looking to see if there's an update for that app. Because if you use the C Spire Health app before it flips over, then you're not entering the COVID-19 specific uh, uh, screening process. So just a, a, a quick point. Let me, I'm going to open it up uh, in just a second. So, um, all right, I'm going to open it up uh, for questions. Uh, Tom? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to, uh, that's what I was to say. I'm going to open it up to questions. Um, uh, one point, what I'd like, if we can, if you have general questions, COVID-19 in the state or, or otherwise, Let's try and get to that after we get to the more specific questions about this initiative. Okay, so I'd like to get to the questions about this initiative first. I'll be there in just a minute. Get to the questions about that, this initiative first, and then once it feels like that's died down, we can uh, ask the more general questions. Another point that I'd like to make for the media, this afternoon we will make a press release available. We will send it out statewide to even those that are on the phone call. We will send that out statewide so it'll have a lot of the information that you've heard here. And uh, some photos, we'll also have video clip of this proceeding, audio clip, and, and so forth. So with that in mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up uh, questions. Ross, you got your hand up first. All questions need to go into the mic, okay, so the people on the call can hear. So please don't ask a question until I've, I've brought you the mic, okay? Thank you. Coming to you, Ross. So I will answer this and then there may be others to fill in. We are kicking this off at this location. As you heard Dr. Dobbs mention, they are planning along with the National Guard and others to have some other potential locations around the state. We hope that we're at a place in the near future that this is not the only testing location. Um, Dr. Dobbs may want to speak to a little more uh, in a little more detail to that. Um, and it may be, depending on the variables that we cannot at this moment exactly define or predict, that we are able in Grenada and at some other sites associated with the medical center to have additional testing as well. But we're starting with this next week. Dr. Dobbs, do you want to speak sure, to other sure, potential yeah. sites? Um, certainly we need geographic coverage for the whole state. Mm -hmm. um, and although UMC is a statewide resource, we know people can't, all people can't get here. Um, there are other, uh, other clinics, other, um, you know, community hospitals and private clinics that are setting up different things. So you'll see more visibility on that, but also in areas where they're not available, we'll, we will be planning these National Guard Department of Health uh, partnerships to, to get that happening. Um, we should have really 
good visibility on that soon. And on our website, as we gain more clarity on different locations, like I know, like in Gulfport, there's one in Lee County, um, and then um, and then uh, you know, as they build these things out within the state of Mississippi. Um, then we will make sure that that's available to everybody so they can know where they can go. So while we're getting that uh, question ready, let me add one more bit to Dr. Dobbs there. So the telehealth screening is statewide. We are, the nice thing of being an academic center is we're working very hard to gather best practices from around the country that have also done similar processes, but we don't have time to pilot it. We don't have time to do a whole bunch of test runs. We need to do it. And so that's why we're gonna be starting next week and take the lessons learned and the protocols that we developed from ours, give those to Dr. Dobbs for replication around the state. So the hope is that we have a telehealth screening process statewide that then high risk patients are referred to their closest geographically located site collection point. And so if you're in Tupelo or you're on the coast, hopefully we'll have locations where we can send you to and nobody, everybody doesn't have to come to Jackson, but we will have ours running and we want to get ours started sooner rather than later and let us work through the kinks that we can then replicate around the state. So that was part of the strategy there. So I'll hit briefly on the manpower and technology. The technology piece, primarily through the support of C Spire, we're comfortable with. Um, we've got the app already in place. We've tested that for several months. So from the technology side, their support is really helping ease concerns on, on that front. From the manpower side, again, that's where Baptist and St. Dominic's have offered to support. We, and again, we don't know exactly how that will look. But you also have to remember a lot of clinical operations that are not emergent are being canceled. That includes for the medical center. So some of our ambulatory clinics where we don't have patients coming through, we're gonna repurpose our employees for this mission. And that way they can stay employed, stay engaged, help us do what we need to do and meet the mission for the state of Mississippi. And I'll have to turn it over to Dr. Dobbs about turnaround times, because I believe that was your other point of your question. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the testing is kind of a moving target um, depending on the supplies. Now, we have pretty good confidence that we can get stuff back, especially if we test people who screen out. So some of our early experience looking at some places that have done this, um, if you really hit people that have fever, you don't do nearly as many tests as you think you will because most of the ones we've been doing are worried well folks or people who, who just want to get screened and, and, and we don't really need to be doing that. So I feel good if we, if we limit to that number, we can meet the need. We're also, as UMC brings theirs on board, we're looking at bringing on a new assay at the Department of Health that will give, increase our capacity. It's an ever moving target. Um, I, I think there will be hiccups like there are in everything right now because supplies are limited, even bandwidth is limited these days. So, um, but I am confident that we can, we can have quick turnaround a uh, 24 hour turnaround would be our target, 48 hour would be our upper limit. Um, that's, I know people are worried and they want instant results. Unfortunately, that's not, the, the test is not a simple test. You don't just stick it in a machine and you get a result. It's hours and hours and hours of preparation and then execution. So there is an, an intrinsic delay because of the complexity of the test. But as we move forward and apply more rapid you know, technology to get these things up, you'll see massive throughput. And commercial labs are doing more and more of this. And so we're also encouraging people in other parts of the state, uh, other clinics, um, if it's not a hospitalized patient or if it's not within these targeted sort of endeavors, to please use your commercial labs because they're increasing their capacity a lot as well. So we would schedule uh, 128 appointments a day. So the maximum number of testing appointments we would do would be 128. So that's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., 16 appointments an hour. And then that's for the testing for the app. We'll have a clinician that will be manning that app from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. If uh, the appointments for the following day become all full, 
then you would either get a technological solution, a, a, a pop-up that tells you that the appointments for that day are full and you need to call back the following day, or you would get a clinician that would come on that would give you the same information and point you to, uh, point you to some resources in the meantime. It depends on when you hit the app or the phone number. I have a question over here. <clears throat> So we hope that we don't see that type of increase, but we anticipate that we will. If you look at what's happening around the country, we, we, people are seeing almost a doubling every day. So the answer to how quickly will these other sites come online, I will tell you as quickly as possible. So our uh, in-house teams are working uh, as fast as they can, as hard as they can to develop that test, but taking the necessary steps to make sure it's an accurate and valid test. So while we can't give you an exact time frame, uh, we would hope that we would be available within the next week to 10 days. And then there was a second part of your question. Um, well, um, will other hospitals still be will, do you believe other hospitals in the state, given the, the surge in testing that will be needed, will be able to develop this technology? Or maybe can you share this technology with these other hospitals? So being that we are an academic medical center with, uh, with basic scientists and translational scientists and a lot of equipment that other hospitals don't have, uh, I'm, that's a unique position that we're in and we're able to develop that test. Whether other hospitals have that particular type of technology, uh, I don't know, but we believe that a lot of it is related to the fact that we're an academic medical center. So it, it, is, it is my thought that we will probably be the only one that would be able to rapidly stand up a test like that and have a, a rapid throughput methodology. Mr. Meehan, uh, can you guarantee that people downloading the app and getting involved in usage won't swamp the system? I can't guarantee that, but I can guarantee you one thing, that our people are Mississippians and they are serving their fellow Mississippians, friends and family, and they have been doing over the last week or 10 days monumental work and we will do everything that we possibly can with some very, very talented, skilled people who care. And they will take care of their fellow Mississippians as best as anyone can. Thank you. What are the capabilities right now as, as you're planning it out? How many calls can you take? I mean, you yep. know that there's Those a clinician on the, somebody on the other end, but how many can you actually take it out the system crash? Now that's a, that's a, a really good question. We're, we're modifying this app on the fly, so I couldn't, I can't tell you what the total number is at this time. But we do know that everything in, in, a, in a crisis situation is predicated on being able to handle capacity. We have many years of experience of dealing with that. And so we're building in for capacity as much as we possibly can. We also have, you know, you have to have the clinicians on the other end of the call to be able to have the capacity to do that. UMMC has done some wonderful planning in a short amount of time on that as well. So we're going to make sure that the resources are put to this to be able to do the very best we possibly can for our fellow Mississippians. And, and if I can just piggyback on that a little bit, I'm certainly the last person to speak to technology capability. Um, many of the people in the room can attest to that. 
However, I just want to say, um, following Mr. Mina and following what you heard earlier about we don't have a playbook for this, is we just we ask for patience. It is not going to be a perfect process on day one. There are many, many variables that we can't control. We're, we're predicting as many of those as we can and planning for as many of those as we can, but we don't know what the volumes will be like. There are many things we don't know. Um, so I, I just want to emphasize over and over again, be patient. We are learning on the fly. We have not had time to pilot this um, and bear with us. We, I, I promise you, we are all doing everything we can do. So just keep that in mind as we work through this and work out the kinks. So we recognize that there will be uh, citizens that call that, that want to be tested, but we right now are adhering to uh, the criteria that we've been asked to with the Department of Health uh, so that we're trying to select the group of patients that will benefit the most from testing now. If you don't qualify for testing when you call, then you will still be given information related to COVID-19 how to self-isolate, how to self-care at home, and you will be told you may have it. You'll be told you may get it in the future if you don't have it now, but uh, if your symptoms change, you're welcome to call back. It's not limited to, to one call from a citizen, but um, we, we have to limit it to that group that we think the, resor the limited resource that we have is gonna benefit the most. So once the schedule is full, we would not even screen or triage the patient at that point. Once that schedule for that day is full, the, the citizen will have to call back the next day in order to, to get triaged or to get scheduled. And I should emphasize that if you don't go through the, the triage process through the C Spire Health app, if you do not do that and you just show up at the testing site, you will not be tested. You have to have an appointment, and with that appointment, we're pairing an identification number that you will have to present in order to be tested. So if you just show up, you will not be tested. So the one other point to piggyback is, again, there's no playbook to this. If we, the medical center, the state of Mississippi, decided we wanted to get this right, we're gonna be well past that April 1 target date of where we would be to start this. So we have to do the best we can sooner rather than later. As we assess it, if we see volumes exceed our current capability, then we will expand as much hours of operations as we can based on the available resources, and resources being testing and manpower. Um, there are a lot of variables in this equation beyond anyone's control, and as we see what the demand and the need for the state of Mississippi will be, then just know that the medical center will stand ready to try to match that as best we can. Um, Commissioner, let me ask a question. What kind of provisions, protection are you setting up, security as it were, for people coming in? Because if any indication has been, you know, the, the run at Sam's, Costco, Walmart, People have gone crazy. Yeah. Uh, people would camp out outside yeah. the fairgrounds right. just for an opportunity to get in there. Even if they're supposed to have numbers, identification, they may camp out. What are your plans to uh, sure. do? Well, this is a, a, a plan that has been developed by the medical center, and I'm going to let them speak to that in just a moment. But I will say my understanding is it's all going to be done inside a person's personal vehicle. They're not going to be allowed to get out, to walk around. They're going to drive in, they're going to be tested, and they're going to drive back out. So I think that's the beauty of this. It's a way that we not only help those who need to be tested who are experiencing those symptoms, but we're reducing in-person contact at doctor's offices and hospitals. And so we're helping stop spread infection for that reason. And I'll let the uh, Dr. Wilson, you, you comment on that. 
So as I mentioned earlier, this is in coordination with the Mississippi Emergency Management Agency. And so we are leveraging other state partnerships uh, with the Department of Public Safety, uh, the Capitol Police, as well as Department of Transportation. So we'll have some signage, the digital signage um, up and displayed for wayfinding. Uh, Highway Patrol will help us with traffic flow as we work through the uh, process of getting patients to go through the screening system. So we'll have a, a very clear messaging system, a very clear directional system as best we can um, to streamline it and making it as effective as we can. Justin? Um, Dr. Dodd, um, I'm sure that this testing will help the department in the long run with the, with the um, running out of resources at the laboratory. Just curious, do you have any uh, protocols in place um, as testing increases at the state lab? You mean protocols as far as prioritization or? Staffing, would you have enough staffing? Are there anything you're thinking about expanding the lab, bringing more people yeah, in? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, the, some of the bottlenecks we're seeing are actually not
what's where I need to go live with that. He is working very closely with the research team. So we're in the process of going down several avenues for developing tests. Some will be a combination of platforms and some will be a totally laboratory-derived test that we'll be doing in-house. And we're also looking not just the development of the test, but ways to scale it. Because we realize that we're probably going to be a state resource for testing in general and being able to do that. So we've ordered some special laboratory equipment that our uh, in-house scientists, our microbiologists, virologists are, are able to utilize to scale these tests. So we'll be looking to try to ramp that up initially. That doesn't stop our initial progress in just developing a test, getting one off the ground, maybe doing a few hundred at a time at the initial stages, but we're looking to ramp that up quickly to 500,000 a day is what we're projecting. Uh, so that was Dr. Richard Suggles, Associate Vice Chancellor for Research. Okay. Any other questions? Awesome. You're always good for questions. Okay. So um, right now we're looking at about um, uh, 20, well, depending on our organization, we're prioritizing hospital samples, right, patients in the hospital. So um, we're committed to getting that to within 24 hour turnaround. Um, I mean, is that kind of your question or? Um, actual. Number of tests? Actual number of tests that are still available that have not been utilized. Oh yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, we, um, We've, we've run about, I think, 800 tests, something like that. Um, and then we have, obviously, the 80 cases that we've we reported out. Um, we, we don't see a shortage. It's always kind of a come and go and sort of supply issue. And we, in general, have maintained a capacity of run about 800 tests. And so we're hoping that sort of rolling supply chain will keep us in that range. But then by next week as well, we want to have a separate assay that we can run that's not quite as vulnerable to the supply chain disruptions. Great. Ross, any kind of questions? And as for these additional testing sites around the state, what's, uh, is UMC doing anything to make sure that safety measures are in place so that someone doesn't accidentally get COVID-19 at one of these sites, proper medical procedures and techniques going to be in place? Absolutely. That's been a major part of the planning to be sure that as we stand up these testing locations, that both the people, the patients that will come through will be as safe as possible. They'll remain in their cars, they'll roll down their windows, and that our individuals, our employees, our workforce that are there performing the test will have all the appropriate PPE and the maximum um, safety precautions possible. Uh, that's part of the important component of being sure that we've got appointments, that it is not a free-for-all, that there's a very planned and careful traffic through the, through the facilities. Any other questions? Okay, uh, I appreciate, uh, first off, I appreciate each one of you for taking some time to come out today. So, uh, this afternoon, starting around 3 o'clock, thereabouts 3 o'clock or so, there'll be some testing going on, not that kind of testing, a, you know, working out that you're practicing. There you go. pictures uh, uh, but I ask if you have any questions you direct those to me directly okay so uh, if you need anything please feel free to find me <laughs>
need to report while at the same time not interrupting what is hysterical time. Okay, thank you everybody. And what you were just watching is a news conference from the Mississippi State Department of Health and University of Mississippi Medical Center talking about what's going to start Monday. As you've seen happening around the country here, we will start having drive through testing for coronavirus people who think they may have coronavirus. There, there is a process to this. There'll be a virtual waiting room set up. You can call in on your smartphone starting Monday morning. A UMMC clinician will determine if you meet the criteria for someone who may have coronavirus. If you do, you will go to the fairgrounds the next day for testing. You're looking live right now at that setup. That setup is at the Mississippi State Fairgrounds. You've been seeing uh, the tents that have been going up here for the past uh, day or so there at the site. That's what that is for. That will be the drive through testing site for people who are believed to have coronavirus in our area. This field collection will be by appointment only. This will be a drive through system. You cannot just drive up on your own. You have to go through UMMC to get an appointment for this. They're also asking for your patients right now. They know this will not be smooth on day one, which is Monday. They say they'll be doing some testing here over the weekend. So if you see a lot of motion going on at the fairgrounds, they're not actually up and running just yet. They'll be testing out this site, making sure it's as smooth as possible for Monday, but they say bear with them. Please be patient that they will expect a couple of kinks there coming up on Monday, but they know that they will get this worked out, but they want to go ahead and get this up and running because as you know, the numbers here in Mississippi continue to rise. 30 new cases were diagnosed that they were reported this morning. 80 cases total in Mississippi. It was just a week and a day ago that we got our first case in Mississippi, and now we're already up to 80. Of course, keep it right here on 16 WAPT News. We'll be giving you updates throughout the afternoon on air, online, and on social media.